So you bought this awesome new font and now you want to use it on your Rapid Weaver sites. Let's figure it out. Hey everybody, Joe Workman here. And in this video, we're going to show you how to use your own web fonts using Font Pro in Rapid Weaver. So whether or not you bought your fonts online from some bundle deal, or maybe you got them from, you know, uh, websites like font shop or my fonts or fonts.com, right? Um, there's a lot of really great things, or there's a bunch of open source fonts out there as well. Like Lotto is a very popular open source font, right? That's available. And we're actually going to be using that font in this video. Okay. So there's a lot of really great fonts out there and you can buy them. And now you have these font files, right? So how do we get it to work? Let's jump in and figure it out. So you've downloaded your fancy new web font and you might be a little confused because what you notice is there are a ton of potential files when you download a font, right? So which ones do we want? What do we need? Right? So here we have with the Lotto font, we have tons of different formats for every typeface. We have an EOT file, a TTF file, a WAF file, a WAF2 file, right? And we have that for every single typeface, for every weight, for every style. So non-italic and italic versions of that typeface, right? So what do we need? Essentially for the web, basically you're going to need the WAF file. That's the basics, right? Every modern web browser will support the WAF file. So number one, pay attention to those for your web fonts. Now, how do you categorize our web fonts? What can we use to help manage these font files for us? So built into OS 10 is an app called Fontbook. Now, Fontbook, you can load your open type fonts, right? So your OTF fonts and your TTF fonts, okay? And it will we'll store those. So you can at least preview your fonts and have a place where you can see everything. Now, Fontbook won't store all your WAF files and WAF2 files and help you manage all of that. So you're gonna have to develop a system inside Finder to manage those files. Now, there are more professional apps out there for managing fonts. Here's an app called Font Explorer X, which is the app that I use to manage my font files. And as you see here, it will store all types of fonts. So it has the open type fonts. It has the WAF fonts for us all managed here. And you can click on one or multiple fonts to preview that font inside the app. So apps like this make it very powerful. Um, but if you're not going to be using web fonts a lot, maybe this might be a little bit too much for you. So for this demo, I've gone ahead and I've chosen the fonts that we're going to use. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use Roboto Slab for our headers, and then we're going to use the Lotto font for our paragraph text. Now, I may want to use italic and bold and bold italic inside my content. So I'm going to make sure that I load all four of those typefaces into Rapid Weaver. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to select all of these fonts and I'm going to add them into the Rapid Weaver 7 resources. Now, one thing you might want to make sure that you do if you're using Rapid Weaver 7 is go ahead and make sure inside your general settings that you are using a portable document. And what that will do is it'll make sure that your font files are actually stored inside the Rapid Weaver project. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start adding our web fonts into Rapid Weaver. So here I have a font family stack and I'm going to go ahead and click plus and add a new web font. So this first one let's use for our headers. Okay. And remember, we're going to be using Roboto slab for our font family names. So just go ahead and give it a family name. I'm going to do Roboto slab. And just for, uh, for safe purposes, go ahead and make sure you don't use any spaces or whatnot. Just make it, you know, all one word, probably all lowercase, but you can make it up whatever you want. Okay. Next up, what we're going to do is we need to define what our font files are. So we only needed one Roboto slab font file. So we're going to go ahead and load that into the normal um, fonts here. So I'm going to go ahead and click set link. Now, what you may think that you can do is go ahead and go here and select the Roboto slab regular WAF file. Okay. 
and click set link. Now, if you were to do it this way, it will work once you publish your web page. However, as of right now, in, inside RapidWeaver, you need to actually put in the full URL to the resource. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Roboto Slab, and then if you notice here is the link. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say copy URL. And then I can go back to my web fonts, and then I can click on my normal web font here. And instead of selecting the resource, I'm gonna say URL, and then I'm gonna paste in the URL to that file. Now I do need to make sure that that, that font file is published to my server, right? But once that font file or resource is published to my server, everything will work properly inside RapidWeaver. So I've already gone ahead and made sure that that font file was published to my server. And now I'm gonna set the fallback font. Now, Roboto Slab, as we said, is a serif font because it actually has serif uh, attributes in the font. So we're gonna set the fallback to be serif, okay? And then lastly, we're gonna apply this to a vault. Now, if you notice inside edit mode, we have a little warning symbol. And we have that warning symbol here because we actually haven't applied this uh, font family to anything yet. So no matter what you apply it to, once we click on a button, that warning will go away. For simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and assign this to a font vault, and we're gonna assign that to font vault one. Now I can go into my header here, and this is a foundation header stack and I can go ahead and apply that to be to actually use font vault one. Now, if you actually wanna preview this typeface inside edit mode, you can do that. This is a great way to ensure that the fonts are actually loading properly without toggling back and forth to preview mode. So in the settings, you can click on the little eyeball icon for the font, and when you do that, you will notice that the typeface has been applied to all of the headers that it should. Right Now you'll also see the little uh, eyeball indicator inside edit mode. And the reason this is here is that, so you realize when a font is in preview mode. Now, when a font is in preview mode, okay, it could cause some jumping in stacks edit mode. So it's not recommended that you actually leave this on because it will cause jumping as you're editing your stacks page. So once you're happy that the font is actually loading properly, go ahead and turn that off. So I've gone ahead and configured the Lotto font for our paragraph type. And if you notice, I loaded the normal, bold, italic, and bold italic typefaces for the Lotto font family. And I've gone ahead and set the fallback font to be a sans serif font because that's exactly what Lotto is. It does not have serif attributes. Then I've gone ahead and assigned this Lotto font family to use of font vault number two. And I'm gonna go ahead and set my paragraph and make sure my paragraph is also assigned to font vault number two. So let's go ahead and preview this page now. So you'll notice now that our fonts here are now being loaded from our web server and it's using the actual font files that we uploaded. Now, one thing I wanna point out is inside this paragraph, most of it is using the normal weight and normal typeface for the Lotto font. However, there are attributes of the paragraph, such as this line right here, is using italic. And then we have some bold text right here, and then some bold italic text down here. Now, the browser, because we've loaded each of those typefaces, is loading the exact typeface that we need to ensure that all of the text throughout the entire content is crystal clear and sharp. So if I hadn't loaded all of the typefaces, what's gonna happen is the browser is gonna faux render the text. And what that means is, it's gonna take the normal typeface and just simply skew it off a little bit to make it look italic, right? That means it's not gonna be crystal clear, it's not gonna be sharp, okay? Same thing goes with bold text. If you don't load the bold typeface for a font family and you actually use bold content, the browser is gonna faux render that by taking the normal typeface and just trying to make it a heavier weight. So font designers have taken a lot of effort 
to make sure that they've designed a font so that it looks crystal clear and sharp for all typefaces. So that means we should load all the typefaces that we're going to use for a particular font. So for example, for the Roboto slab headers, I knew that I only needed the normal font weight. I wasn't gonna add any sort of italic headers to my page. So I didn't need to load those. But if I did want to use italic headers, then I would need to make sure that I loaded that italic font face for Roboto slab. One last thing before we leave. Inside Font Pro in the web font stack, you'll notice inside font setup, there is an advanced option. Now, what this allows us to do is remember when we first looked at the huge folder of font files, okay? Now, some of those font files would be good if we wanted to make sure that we supported older versions of browsers. So let's say we wanted to support IE8 still, or older versions of Firefox or Chrome, right? Now, you'd have to you know, go back and support really older versions because really, uh, WAF was supported for a long time. However, if you wanted to, Okay, what you would do is you would check advanced and then inside add extensions, you would check all of the various font file extensions that you're planning on loading. Okay, then you're going to want to put in the URLs for normal, bold, italic and bold italic that you're going to want to load. So, for example, if we take the particular um, lotto font family, okay what I would do is I would put in the URL to the font file without the extension. So I put in the URL. Now this was a bold italic URL, so it would technically go down here, right? But the point is you're gonna put in the URL to your font file without the extension. The reason is the font family stack will then put in the extension for every single one that you want, okay? So that's exactly what this font setup advanced is for. Now I have to say, I recommend that you just stick with the essential WAF. That is what Google Fonts does. That's what pretty much a lot of the online font vendors are doing because that's gonna cover a large majority of your user and visitor base. Only use advanced if you're certain, only use advanced if you're certain that you have to support really old browsers. So that's web fonts, everyone, right? We learned how we can, where to purchase fonts, right? So you can purchase fonts online. Um, again, myfonts.com, fonts.com. There's some great deals such on as Mighty Deals and a ton of like web design bundle websites, right? There's tons of them out there, right? And of course there are great open source free fonts that you can do and find online, right? If you Google, you know, great free fonts, you'll probably find some great ones. We use Lotto in this demo. So, you know, go ahead and download Lotto. It is free and um, use that and play around with it. It's a great font to learn from. Now, remember in RapidWeaver, it is best to use the URLs, right? That way it works both online as well as inside RapidWeaver. So that's about it. It's pretty simple, right? I hope this video helped you. I hope you love using your own fonts, right? Because it really gives you the ultimate flexibility in terms of design. And fonts really do help take your website designs to the next level. So I hope you're enjoying Font Pro and um, take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye.